Hey Runway fans, this is Jean and I'm back for our first video of the new decade. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. This is going to be about GPT-2. I'm going to show you a few things about this model. It's a really crazy language model that generates really compelling text. And I'm going to show you a few projects that have been made with it and then we'll talk about how to use it in Runway and some interesting things you can do with it. Um, just a little background, a couple of years ago I started teaching uh, machine learning for artists, this you know class about how to use AI creatively and the most common uh, use case for the most common thing that people did uh, in the class was to use this model called ChartRNN which was a character level recurrent neural network that would uh, basically create text and it was sort of the butt of every joke that the text that it would generate would be kind of not make very much sense. It would be sort of, uh, you know, meandering around saying something in the style of a particular text that it was trained on, but not really making a lot of sense. And, and lots of lots of projects kind of were based on this principle. And I think we're kind of approaching the end of this, uh, this period because now we have language models that are super difficult to believe that they're not, that they're not um, humans. I mean, you have to at least read them for a little while to get that sense. Um, and GPT-2 is kind of among this this first wave of a very realistic language model. So let's let's uh, let's have a look at it. Um, now GPT-2 was uh, it was announced first by OpenAI. This is the co the um, company that made that trained the first GPT-2 model uh, and was based on a previous model called GPT-2 GPT. Uh, the, the basic principle is that they're using a type of model architecture called a transformer. If you'd like to, you can read more about transformers here. This is the original article, Attention is All You Need, which was made to explain how uh, transformers work. And, um, if, and uh, they're working on a principle uh, called attention. Attention is this mechanism in neural networks that allows it to kind of focus in on a subset of the input that it's seeing. And this kind of helps. This is a little bit how humans work. You know, you're not always paying attention to everything that you're receiving. You're, you're looking at subsets of things. And so um, if you want to understand a little bit more about attention, I highly recommend this article by Chris Ola and Shane Carter. Um, who, who wrote a little bit about how attention mechanisms work inside of recurrent neural networks, although the principle is quite similar. Um, so I'd very much uh, have a look at that if you want to learn more about the uh, technical aspects of this. So when OpenAI released this uh, language model, they initially didn't even release the uh, large model because they were afraid of it being misused for you know fake news and spam and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, eventually, they, they uh, made these staged releases uh, that ultimately culminated in them releasing the large 1.5 billion parameter model um, about a month, month ago, I think, a month or two ago. And um, they, uh, because people wouldn't believe them, they, they actually released some of the samples that, that, the, um, that, their, that GPT-2 was capable of making. So, for example, they would give it a prompt in like like this following and then have it complete the sentence so they would ask uh, they would say in human the human would prompt it and say in a shocking finding scientists discovered a herd of unicorns living in the remote previously unexplored valley in the andes mountains even more surprising to the researchers was the fact that the unicorn spoke perfect english and then the model would complete it uh, with with m several paragraphs of very believable com text completion. So the scientists named the population after a distinctive horn, Ovid's unicorn. These four horned silver white unicorns were previously unknown to science. And if you read it onward, you'll see that it makes quite a bit of sense. Um, and if you look at some of the other samples, you'll see that it's able to capture a wide diversity of different kinds of uh, things that, that you can produce text to do. So, for example, this is kind of like, I guess, you know, entertainment or celebrity news gossip. Um, you know, this is this is actually trained on or as not, well, it's, uh, not trained on, but this is prompted by scientific writing. Uh, actually, this is just the, exactly what they wrote about GPT-2. Um, you can make all sorts of, uh, you know, system prompts for homework assignments and all kinds of stuff. And then the idea is that this is a language model that's trained to basically predict text. But this uh, language model, besides for predicting text, can be used for lots of other text, uh, lots of other tasks like question and answering, uh, question answering, uh, maybe creating chatbots, basically anything that needs uh, human generated text. Um, can uh, or, or text rather can be generated by a machine using a model like GPT-2. 
Um, GPT-2 can be retrained to do different things, so we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But um, yeah, for example, uh, this is uh, some work that was made by Janelle Shane, who, who fine-tuned GPT-2 in order to create cocktails. Um, so these are all fake cocktails that are being created by by GPT-2 and you know of course it's still kind of funny what it writes but you know at least it's more believable than than um, similar things that were done by Char and Nun in the past. Two other projects I'm, I'm gonna just quickly tell you about that you should definitely check out as well if you want to get some inspiration is AI Dungeon 2. This is a game that was developed by Nick Walton. Initially you would just play the game inside of a collab notebook which is pretty funny. Uh, but basically it's this sort of um, classic role-playing game where you pick a, a, a setting, some kind of a setting um, like fantasy, mystery, or zombies or whatever. Then you pick a character and then you have this interactive console-based game where you're constantly writing a story for yourself and then the GPT-2 kind of completes the story as you go. And it's, uh, it's really, really, really fun. Um, it's pretty impressive that we can have these role-playing games that are made up on the spot. Um, definitely well worth checking out for some inspiration and then I really enjoy this uh, subreddit simulator uh, this is a sub subreddit on, on reddit where all of the the, um, the only bots can post in it and the bots have been trained on GPT-2 and the, the, they're basically bots that use GPT-2 to train themselves in the style of a particular subreddit so it's these different subreddits that are essentially uh, chatting with each other and it's, it's, it's quite funny some of the territory they get into um, it's not for the faint of heart. Sometimes, you know, it's Reddit, so sometimes uh, some some upsetting content kind of slips through the cracks. But it's definitely it's definitely pretty funny. So I would just check it out. And then, so yeah, let's let's have a look at uh, GPT two and Runway. I'm going to find, I'm going to search for GPT, and you'll see that there's three models here. I'm going to pick the one all the way on the right here. This is the one that was made by Runway. It has the most plays. Um, I think the other ones are quite similar, but you can have a look. And then basically I'm going to pick the 1.5 billion parameter model and then click run remotely off of text. So, um, and now this is going to take a little while to start up. Um, the reason for that is that GPT-2 comes with four different sized models. So there's about 100, uh, 100 million parameters, 345, 774 million parameters, and then the biggest one, which is the one that I'm uh, starting up, is the 1.5 billion parameter model. Uh, the more parameters the model has, the, the, the better it is, basically, the more complex the model is. And so it's able to create more coherent text. The, um, the OpenAI kind of released these over time. And, but, the, of course, the bigger one takes a little while to start up. So this, this might be actually a long process just launching the model. It's a, it's a pretty heavy one. Um, once it's launched, that it, you're, you're kind of good to go. You can keep on pinging it with new content. So it's pretty fast at that. But the initial launch is, is actually quite slow so don't you know just be patient and um and uh yeah well let's let's give it a few seconds and then i'm gonna try to generate some text okay it's uh ready to go so now let's uh put in some news um so let's let's uh make up some fake news um Let's say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna type it first here and then basically put it into the console. Uh, so Trump facing impeachment query, inquiry um, says he will not back down. Something, I'm sorry. Sorry to, you know, put in some Trump news. I, I'm not a fan either, but, you know, it's, uh, I'm just trying to demonstrate GPT 2 on the most sort of generic text possible. So it makes sense that it'll be about that. Okay, so I'm gonna paste that in here, and um, now it's gonna go ahead, you'll see that the little blue bar starts to go, and it's going to make some text for me. Hopefully it's not, hopefully it's not upsetting. So uh, let's see what it says. It says, Trump facing impeachment query, says he will not back down. Stuart Rhodes, a spokesman for Ambassador Haley, said Ambassador Haley has the full support of the White House for promoting peace, stability, and security in the region. The president is committed to building a co coalitions of allies, including Israel, to defund the, to defend the legitimate interests of all the peoples of the region, in particular, a safe and peaceful return of Palestinians to their land. Blah blah blah. Very compelling, like very realistic. It looks like the New York Times to me. I don't know. Maybe you'd have to read it for a while to get a sense if the article is uh, is uh, an embellishment or something, or or just you know not making sense. 
but um, but you can see that what what we what we have is actually like really really um, coherent machine generated text, and so that's kind of where what we have here. Um, so okay, let's think of uh, a few things that you may want to do. So first of all, of course, this is uh, by itself a very powerful language model. You do there are ways online of um, uh, some repositories that show you how you can um, how you can actually um, fine-tune the original GPT-2 model, the one that we just used, on a specific data set of your choice. Um, so the, the when I showed you the uh, Janelle Ch Shane's uh, cocktails generated, that was a GPT-2 that was fine-tuned on the particular setting. Same thing with the AI Dungeon, those are uh, m uh, multiple um, fine-tuned GPT-2s. And um, there's a recipe for doing this. You can actually find it on GitHub. This is a fork of GPT-2 by um, this N Shepherd, which describes uh, in the README how you can use it to, you could ge generate a text data set. Um, you know, you, you basically just put a whole bunch of text into a text file, and then, um, then you can use uh, some of the uh, utilities here to turn that into a data set for, for the uh, GPT-2 training, uh, training utility. And then you can basically fine tune your own model of GPT-2 on a particular data set of your choice. And so um, whatever that could be, that could be novels, you know, maybe science fiction or literature or movie scripts or, you know, whatever it is that, that, that you want to see machine generated text for. And other, um, there's also a lot of, um, there's a lot of ideas for how to turn this into um, you know things like chat, uh, question and answering systems and and things that kind of do somewhat more elaborate uh, text generation text uh, tasks and so that's something that we'll probably have to save for another video as it's a little bit quite a bit complicated more complicated than this uh, nevertheless like uh, you should definitely uh, can, you should definitely look at uh, look at what gpt2 can do now because the the range of tasks that these kinds of language generation models are going to be able to face in the um, next two years is going to be pretty impressive and so it's definitely well worth um, looking into now so that's all i have for you this week we're going to be doing a few more of these um, looking into other kinds of generative models over the next few weeks we're part of a sequence of generative models i think most likely next week we're going to cover glow um, so please uh, stay tuned for that and uh, have fun <laughs>